Welcome to the Bare Naked ZYXs, where we discuss every Bare Naked Lady song from the last two albums in opposite order. But we are also going back to cover any B-sides that we may have missed, which is one of tonight's songs. On bass, keys, and drums, we have Betsy tonight because no one else came. (laughs) (laughs) I actually can play bass. (laughs) You got one of the three, right? Uh, I could fiddle on the keys, and I could definitely not play drums. (laughs) (laughs) I would play drums, but it would sound really horrible. And I can play keys on one hand. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's a start. (laughs) With the other hand, I might be (laughs) hen-pecking. Yep. One little finger at a time, da da da. <laughs> yeah, that's about that's my exactly playing ability. What you mean. Three blind mice. <laughs> <laughs> Still provokes an emotion, I'm sure. Um, so tonight we're going to discuss a very rare song. Um, you can only find it in two places. It's on YouTube, but the quality of the one that's on YouTube. I'm going to I'm going to post it on our liner notes, but I'm going to recommend people do not listen to that version. We have our own YouTube page. Hopefully at some point we will I will upload the other version of that, which you can find on the BNL archives. If you want to find that on there, um, you want to just go on there and search for Ties Night Before Christmas. That's how it's labeled on there. And the audio is much much better, very clear. Ties uh, Night Before Christmas? That's what it's called. Ties Night Before Christmas. Hmm. Because this is a Tyler okay. song. Okay. <laughs> I was... I The way they were kind of calling out in the song, I thought it might have been Andy. Oh, interesting. Yeah. No, this is Tyler. That was my first impression. And I'm like, oh, he's like... He's saying stuff like, give it up for the drummer. <laughs> I'm like, it, I mean, it would be like Tyler to be self-effacing like that but also like no because he's giving it up for the drummer who at that point was ed oh sure twas the night before christmas on pearl street is the official name of the of the song Was the night before Christmas on Pearl Street. All the people were sleeping because the people were beat. The snow had been falling for most of the day, and it lay over everything, sooty and gray. It was originally recorded uh, December 17th, 1997, at the Fox Theater in Boulder, Colorado, um, by the radio station KBCO. This was the third annual Acoustic Christmas, and it was during their Born on a Pirate Ship tour, which is why Andy was not with them. Uh. Now, I I was like, oh, well, my first thought on this was that, oh, well, this must have been one of those songs that, like, at this time in their lives, what they would do is they would they'd be playing pretty good long sets, and they would take a break. Like, they were they're very energetic on stage um and so like steve and ed would like take a break and and hand it over to ty to and jim to take over for a little bit and they would leave the stage but (laughs) that's not what happened because i went on to setlist.fm and this was the second song they played that night so I don't That's think an interesting choice. <laughs> yeah. They started off that night with God rest you merry gentlemen and we three kings and then went right into this song. Which is odd. This song kind of feels to me like something you'd have to ease into a little more. Yeah. It, like a not second song, maybe fifth or sixth or seventh. I mean, I get that it was the Christmas season, so they were kind of getting the Christmas songs out of the way early. But it just maybe it it feels like a filler slunk song in the middle of the of the set, and it wasn't. Yeah, it kind of feels like a little bit of a jam session or something. I'm trying to remember what they followed this up with. Hold on. 
Yeah, I have no idea. You found that on the... Uh, setlist.fm. Well, what do you want to give it for a score? <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. Um, <laughs> if that's the name of the street where Tyler grew up on, that'd be pretty funny. Because Pearls is a pretty famous brand of of uh, drum line. As oh, well. <laughs> that's interesting. Well, I I went online to look up where Pearl Street is in mm. Toronto. So you stalked him. <laughs> You're going on record as saying you stalked Tyler Stewart of Verdigilly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I people know that I stalk Kevin like religiously. Oh, that's true. I and mean, Tyler's right down the road. He, Kevin's a good choice because like he wouldn't even get mad. He'd be like, "Hey, buddy." No, he's so sweet. He wouldn't care. Tyler, however, chased me down the street with his drumsticks, and that was not comfortable. Yeah. Uh, stick you to death. <laughs> right in the spleen. Yeah. <laughs> but Pearl Street is, like, right in the middle. It's it's only a couple blocks away from the CN Tower. And oh. so it's right in the, like, business district. And I was looking to see, like, are there any apartments on this street? And I didn't see any. So, like, if anything, they're, like, well, small apartments above businesses or something like that. Maybe when he was a kid, it wasn't as maybe. grown up. And there were neighborhoods. It, it's possible. I mean, I know Tyler did I really grow liked... up in Toronto. Well, if we're going to talk about bare naked ladies' neighborhoods, I really like Jim's neighborhood. In narrow streets. In narrow streets. <laughs> or Meryl Streep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a friendly place. Yeah. That's a nice place. Right down the street from from the bridge. Sesame Street? And... Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Pantheon listeners. Christian Swain here. You caught me just finishing up some editing on Getting Real with John and Beth. I want to share my first experience with Factor Meals for you. I think you'll find this interesting because I bet the same thing happens to you. I had just received my first shipment from Factor Meals the other day, and I was excited to try one of the prepared restaurant quality meals for myself. Anyway, I was working away and noticed it was very late, and it was my night to make dinner. I jumped up and headed to the kitchen, went to grab the ingredients for the dish I was going to make, and realized I was missing a prime ingredient. Well... I could make a run to the store, or I could make one of my new factor meals. <laughs> Actually, the choice was easy. I grabbed a cavatappi, an Italian-style pork ragu with garlic broccoli, heated the oven per instructions, and minutes later was enjoying a very delicious, nutritious, and dietitian approved meal. It really was everything Factor Meals said it would be. No prep, no mess meals. Factor Meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. Take it from me and head to factormeals.com slash Pantheon50 and use the code Pantheon50 to get 50% off. That's factormeals.com slash Pantheon50 and use the code Pantheon50 to get 50% off. Um, so the song they played after this was Shoebox. So again, an odd choice of going from this into shoebox. Um, what? I don't know Why? what kind of what kind of energy they were going for that night. That's a lot of energy. Well, it's a fair amount of energy, I would say. Well, duration wise, like that's a long song, the Pearl Street song. Yeah, they went from this to shoebox to life in a nutshell. To Straw Hat, Dirty Old Dirty Hank. So it's like, all cranking tunes. Yeah. <laughs> and then they did an ad lib on Hanukkah. Thank you very much. We'd like to thank our opening act, Grand Naked Ladies. Oh, they did a great job tonight, eh, those guys? Uh, give it up for Grand Naked Ladies. I wish them well. I hope they do really well. Yeah. They're a local band, are they not? They are they are from they are from Boulder. <laughs> So how are you, everybody? This is, uh, we've been touring since the dawn of time. And this is our last show. Then we're going to go ever. home. We're ever. Gonna, ever. Ever. Then we're going to go home and enjoy the festive season. Then we're doing like five more shows. And then we're going in and making a new record. So. We're very excited to be spending this last night before the holidays with all of you. This has been a nice way to spend it so far. So Bannock and ladies are going to do one set now. And then after we're done, 
bare naked ladies are coming up. Yeah. Mm. Then we're gonna rock the house. That'd be cool. Is everybody all right? Is everybody guys, all right? Are you guys in the Christmas spirit yet? Are you guys in the Hanukkah spirit yet? Who's getting ready to spark up the menorah? Come on, let me see all the Jews in the house tonight. Come on, show me. Say it loud. I'm a Jew and I'm proud. Oh, yeah. over the world, right? It's just one of those characteristics we have. Just like any other human on the face of the earth, I have been a Jew since the date of my birth. I want to tell you that I'm out of you, you be here. I want to tell you that I wish you all a good new year. Just to, that's just to the people who are not Jews, because to those of us who are, well, it's not news that we're in 57, 58 or something like that, yeah? It's happened in like October or something. Yeah, you know. He's a Hebrew. I want to tell you that our prison suck it. I resent the way that my parents did it. Try to get it, rip me off. I want to tell you that I always get a bad chop around the holidays. It's something in the air. It's something in the sky. It's something in my underwear. It's because I forget to wash them before I put them on. It's because they have the starch inside and I am wrong. If I had tried to walk around the house in my brand new Dodge and I'm quiet as a mouse. <laughs> To Hello City, Stomach mm. versus Heart, Alternative Girlfriend, These as- Apples. Okay. And then they did another ad lib about Tyler's experience <laughs> in Boulder. I need to listen to these ad libs. So I, uh, I called home two nights ago, and uh, I have a two-year-old daughter, and uh, it's, it's a cool time because she's starting to talk on the phone now. She'll actually, like, tell me what she's doing and stuff, tell me what she's having for dinner. And so I called the other night and, and uh, well, I called home and talked to her on the phone. And she was in the bathtub. And so my wife was holding the phone. And I said, hey, sweetie, what are you doing? She said, I'm in the bathtub. And I said, oh, what, what have you got in there? I got my toys. Oh, that's great. What toys have you got with you? I got my bottle and I'm filling it up. And I said, oh, that's great. What else are you doing? Well, Daddy, my arm is broken. (laughs) And I said, your arm's broken? Yeah, it's sore. I said, maybe you could put your mummy back on the phone. (laughs) (laughs) My wife takes the phone, and it turned out it was just a a video that she saw with some kid with a broken arm. And now she's decided every once in a while, my finger's broken. (laughs) It's sore. (laughs) Mummy. I broke my leg. It's sore. It's a bit of a scare, though, at first. (laughs) That was a good story. I called called home, and my, my son said to me, Daddy, you're an asshole. You're never home. You're always on the road. You think you're so hot. 
so I, I hung up and pretended it was a crank call. <laughs> I called home and talked to my daughter tonight and she said, I'm pregnant. <laughs> Not really. But... You had kind of a, you had a special Boulder experience today, didn't you, Ty? Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, I think I met, I don't know, the mayor and the mayor's assistant of Boulder, I'm pretty sure. Must be. Well, I was, uh, I had to go home. We went out for a nice dinner tonight with our, with our friends, uh, Rich and Anita from Reprise and it was great. But I had to go back and, uh, you know, get my stage gear together. So I went back to the Boulderado where we're staying, and I thought, well, it's a bit of a hike to the Fox. I better What's catch your room it. number, Ty? My room number at the, <laughs> at the Boulderado is XXX. X, X. <laughs> so I went back, and uh, then I called a cab, and I stood in front of the Boulderado. The guy on the phone was kind of like, what number are you calling from? Uh, well, I don't know. It's an automatic phone. Where are you? I'm at the Boulderado. Okay, I send a cab there. Fifteen minutes later, there's still no cab. But there was two bearded, tie-dyed-wearing, headband, dreadlock guys. And I said, hey, guys, are you going anywhere near the Fox Theater? I got to be on stage in 15 minutes. And they said, well, yeah, sure, dude, okay. Let's just clear the shit out of the back for you. So I got in, and the first thing the guy said to me was, Hey, well, aren't there, like, women playing on the Fox tonight? I said, No, man, that's Bare Naked Ladies. I'm the drummer, Tyler. Oh, wow, cool. And then he said, Do you smoke herb, man? And I said, Only if it's fresh basil. So he blazed up right away. He blazed up the, the herb. But not the herb you're looking for. Exactly. In the words of Burger King, 1983. <laughs> That's correct. And the Grateful Dead started to pump out of the stereo system. And suddenly, I was in a deadhead's car. About a 1980 rickety old Honda Civic. And they said, I said, where are you guys going? Well, we're going to, was it Cold Mountain Canyon or something? Cold Creek Canyon? If the clutch gets us there. And they're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So they drove me up in front of the Boulder, or the uh, Fox Theater here, and uh, they let me off, and I, and I handed the guy ten bucks. I said, look, just in case you guys are driving up there in this thing, and if your clutch blows or you run out of gas... Oh, uh, ten bucks is perfect. You just wrap that around the clutch, gets you back in no time. <laughs> Well, you never know, 10 bucks might come in handy somewhere. And the guy's, the guy's response to that was, That's so unnecessary. So, the mayor and his assistant are on the way to Cold Creek, Canada. If they die, you'll be without a leader. He will Tyler, he was late. Almost missed the gig Then he met up With some hippies Who were cool If you dig Well he piled into the backseat Of their old Honda Civic And he said My name is Tyler And he said Nice to meet you man My name is Rick So he sparked up a bit And then they went into Jane, crazy, great provider, old apartment, million dollars. Maybe we can put like a little tiny fridge in there somewhere. Place to be, absolutely. Go upstairs, open up the fridge, and be full of 
all kinds of Christmas snacks. New from Kellogg, something we always sell, we just added a little bit of food coloring. I prefer the Rice Krispie Squares with those little flecks of red and green, though. Now, the ones I like are the, are the Halloween ones, because they have Halloween ones. It's orange and black. Because mm. then they just save up all the burnt ones from over the course of the year, and they just use those, the black ones. Sometimes I feel I've got to run away. I've got to get away from the pain you drive into the heart of me. The love we share seems to go nowhere. And something else that he says that I toss and turn. I can't sleep at night. Once I ran for you. And then their rap has been I think I'm gonna sneeze. And then came back for Brian Wilson and What a Good Boy. Like this, I want to go back to this concert. <laughs> yeah. This is an amazing concert. That sounds amazing. That's really a, like a high energy mix. Yeah. I mean, there's a few in there like that aren't quite as high energy, but. And then you have this like pretty good, really bluesy, relaxed song <laughs> that starts this concert. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know what I thought this sounded like? 
I thought this sounded like like a holiday edition of like I love you. You know mm-hmm. how Jim sings I love you. And if you mix that with a, like a love child of like Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yep. <laughs> yep, I could see that. And put in some uh, eggnog seasoning <laughs> or something. Eggnog seasoning? <laughs> I think that's just cinnamon. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> nutmeg? Is, <laughs> is nutmeg the, the seasoning they use in eggnog? Nutmeg. I think so. Yeah, I do. I swear. I know baking <laughs> very well. I don't. Um, but boy, God. It went on for a while. It is a very long song. <laughs> and I, I think the one thing that I didn't like about it was... Just one thing. One that it went on so long and that you could tell it was just them. This is almost like another ad lib more than anything else. Yeah, it's like the ad lib that never ends. <laughs> <laughs> was it four or five minutes? Yeah, I think it's about, like it was four minutes. It's four. It was clever. Anytime I get to hear Tyler singing, well, rapping, singing, uh, telling a story, some, not rapping. <laughs> what would you call it? It's well, it's, it's like, like loose, spoken word almost. Yeah, it, it's like that. So it's like from uh, when I married an axe murderer when they're doing the the. <laughs> I'm still gonna watch that. <laughs> when they're they're in the jazz clubs and they're doing this like really artsy type jazz type stuff and they're just talking to the music it's almost like that I want to be Betty's Barney. Hey, Jane, get me off this crazy thing called love. (laughs) Somebody get me a seltzer. I'm parched. (laughs) Okay, it's over by there by the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could go on for quite a while. Yeah, <laughs> you know. and they're but they're having fun uh, with it. Yeah, yeah, I can sense the fun. Hmm? I think the thing that I really wished, like the trouble with Tracy, is I really wished that they had been, they had added more to it. Like it was a very basic blues back background to it. Um. And I wish yes, that yeah. they had expounded upon that and built it. Like, I, I'm i actually yep. angry that this wasn't on the holiday album. <laughs> like, this could have... I mean, if you've got it, you might as well throw it on there because they they put some work into it. Yeah. Here's the thing. Like, That's original. The lyrics are there. It's not like he's just randomly mm-hmm. riffing. Like, they, they all rhyme. They're all there. He obviously wrote this ahead of time. It's not hard to play. They're playing just a simple blues background. If they had done, mm-hmm. if they had given this to Kevin and say, we want you to throw some stuff in the background. We want you to make it really interesting throughout this. And they had just gone into the studio and had some fun with this and taken out all of those instrumental things that Kevin or Steven did on the Casio. That frees up two minutes. Um, I would rather hear something like this. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, like the bass line was pretty pumping. I liked it. It was nice and chunky, and it was very. Um, I liked how f- forward the bass line was, mm. and I I don't know. It some of the lyrics were kind of throwaway. Some of them were were pretty clever, um, but so it kind of just went on and on <laughs> um so that might give you an indication <laughs> test of your score. score yeah i i really like the part where he kicked up where he, and, and this isn't a song that they've ever played anywhere else 
This is a one-time song. I don't know why they've never done it on... Like, they've done tons of Christmas and holiday tours since then. Never have done it since. So you feel it is a scripted song? Oh, yeah. Like, they actually wrote this down? Oh, yeah. Because you could tell, cause the, okay. or at least here's here's why I think that. He gets to that line at the end where he says... Now, there's only one guy who flies Christmas night, and I knew that that fat guy was Steve Page. Oh, Santa Claus, right? I thought... <laughs> he kicked my ass later, Steve. Let me try that again. Now, there's only one guy who flies Christmas night, and I knew that that fat guy was Santa Claus, right? But he says the line about the fat man being Steve. We all know the fat man that comes on Christmas Eve that, is oh, that's Steve. That's true. He did crack up. That's probably my favorite part. And he was really cracking up. There's a harmony at that point. I was li- I've was i listened to this so many times. Um, there's a harmony that comes in when he says, you know, we all know the fat man on that comes on Christmas Eve is Steve Page, right? There's a harmony <laughs> from Steve on the word right. That's right. You can hear it if you're listening for it. And he goes, so you hear right, and Steve comes in, and then you hear him like laugh in the background, like, wait a minute, you were supposed to say that. <laughs> and, you know, Tyler says, you can kick my ass later, Steve. <laughs> and then the next time around, that he, he's, let me try it, let me try that again. And they come back around, and he does it, so it's Santa Claus. You can hear Steve come in on the right the second time, but you can hear the little tinge of anger in there. Like, you got me on that last time. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> That's that guy Santa Claus, but, right? Like, it, it's written. It's scripted. At least somewhat. I really wish mm-hmm. they had they had re-recorded this, or at least a version of this. Like, they re- re-recorded Christmas christmas with the cregans for for it why can't they record this no that's a good point get on that guys another christmas album this has to be on it (laughs) yeah i mean i think if you're gonna flesh out a christmas album this would i mean considering what else they put on there (laughs) uh, go for it because you know there, I do have quite a few that I like from their Christmas album, but um, I, I mean, I think it's because it is such a rarity that's that Tyler's singing a whole song, and you know me, I'm a sucker for a good ad lib, so um, I think it would be worth putting on an album, and you know, I mean, it's it's not even B side. It's like if there if it was like a dodecahedron, and it'd be like a G side or something. It's it's really rare. So oh yeah, it'd be it'd be worth kind of like, uh, you know, exposing it to more people just to, yeah, you know, show Tyler that, you know, he's he's got some skills too. And Ed is <laughs> doing a good job on drums. Yeah, yeah, Jim Jim Cregan, Jim Cregan on the bass. <laughs> Let's get the drummer some. Yeah, yeah, pretty flawless. The, and the the drum solo was pretty cool. Like it 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 stuck right in there. I was like, okay, yeah, that works. Yeah. And Jimmy was bringing it on the bass. Again, I'm not quite sure why they would play this second where they're like, oh, we played this song. Tyler, come out of here from behind the drums for one one song and then go back behind the drums. <laughs> Just a really odd oh, timing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think they figured it out later on where they had Tyler coming out and doing the dancing bits later on, like, with later tours. Mm-hmm. So maybe they're like, yeah, that didn't work so well. That was really odd. <laughs> uh, I don't have a I don't know. ton more to say about this song, though. I don't either. It's a, 
I didn't even print the lyrics out because I was just like, uh, I don't know. Well, you can't find them. Like <laughs> they're the they're not anywhere. You have you uh, would have to sit there and write them down and translate. I mean, that's what I meant to say. I couldn't find them, and so I didn't print them oh, out. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that what i said yeah i think so i didn't say that it wasn't worth printing the lyrics out i just didn't print the lyrics out because i didn't think it was worth my time and paper <laughs> but still not the worst song no there are, but there the are much worse songs i get the feeling that we How's will come up against some soon <laughs> Hey, Pantheon listeners, Christian Swain again with something every podcast listener and music junkie needs to hear. As I'm sure you can guess, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I also listen to a lot of music, so having high quality headphones and earbuds are absolutely critical to my day. Oh, and I have numerous pairs. In fact, I have a junk drawer of used devices that have bitten the dust, so I've tried them all. Recently, I was sent a pair of earbuds by Raycon, and the first thing I noticed was the cost. Uh, Looks like their products are about half the price of other premium brands. Okay, that's cool. And the reviews seem pretty stellar. Okay, checks that box. So I got my Raycon Everyday Earbuds, a nice packaging to open, and what I immediately noticed were the pack of ear tips for sizing. Uh, I'll tell you, I have small ear canals. Uh, I know, a flaw. So to see choices for the best fit, uh, especially while exercising, uh, oh yeah. And yes, they were immediately comfortable. Sound quality was great too. Plus I have three EQ options that I love because I like more bass in my music and less in the podcasts. Eight hours of playtime for the battery is great as well. Surround sound, noise canceling, and awareness mode all included. I think I'm in business, and I just realized I've had them in all day. Like I said, super comfortable. Go to buyraycon.com slash pantheon today to get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's right. You'll get 20% off and free shipping at buyraycon.com slash pantheon. Well, why don't we give some uh, rankings to this? So let's see. What would be a good one for this? Hmm. Uh, How many sleds? Pearls? Wait, what did you <laughs> okay. say? I said pearls. <laughs> <laughs> how many pearl streets? Um, how many, how mm. many sleds? Because that's what they lose in the song. He loses... He, Santa right, crashes right, right, and, right, right. and Tyler's got to go out there and save Christmas by giving him his sled. I want to know what kind of sled Tyler just has randomly around his house, by the way. Is it like just a plastic? Like a radio flyer yeah. or something? <laughs> just So now Santa is going around delivering toys on a radio flyer. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're pretty good quality. I could probably hold billions of toys. Of course. Um. So yeah, let's... Let's do that. How many radio flyers do we give this song? <laughs> I'll let you go okay. first. Um, I mean, like I said, I kind of didn't. Uh, I only listened to this song maybe a half dozen times just because it. I kind of got a little bored in the middle. <laughs> <but> I kind <laughs> of. <laughs> uh, they're just kind of going on and on. Um, it was clever. I did. I did like the musicality of it, especially the bass. Um, and of course, the ad libs are always the best for me. Um, but like you said, I think it could have done with some fleshing out, or geez, you know, Steve could have played his flute or something. <laughs> <laughs> something to give it a little more body, and I don't know. So. I guess that being said, it's a good song. It's maybe a nice palate cleanser that you have once a year during Christmas. <laughs> um, so I guess I would give it mm, 2.8. 2.8. Okay. Um, I, I really like this song. Um, as a deep dive, it is... I would say one of my favorite deep dives. Um, I really wish it had been on the holiday album and that they had taken the time to just spruce it up a little bit. Not that there's anything wrong with this song, but 
I really would have liked to have seen a a part like where they're like, okay, Steve, we're gonna have you add this piece in. Kevin's gonna add some little pieces in, and it really becomes this yeah, yeah. this full decked out bluesy jazz type number um, where they show off their chops, which they could have. Um, and it's sad that that wasn't on there because it was a part of the holiday album that was missing. And the holiday album has so many great parts and pieces that are different and, and bizarre and make it a different holiday album than I'd ever heard before. Um, I, this would have been one of those things and it was right in their back pocket. Like it was right there. They had had it for like almost 10 years at this point when they recorded the holiday album, like why not pull it out? It's disappointing. Um, but as you're, as you were talking, I'm like, yeah, it, it is a little, it is a little long, um, and, and monotonous because of the way that it's done. And I think I, it, it lowered my score a little bit. I'm going to give it a 3.5. Oh, okay. But so I lowered your score. <laughs> you lowered bad. my score. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Brought Betsy. Down the room. You, no, not once. Sorry, man. Not that I heard. We'll have to find out. What? <laughs> Wait for it. Wait for it. All righty. <laughs> well, have a good you night. You too. Buenas noches. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> Feliz Navidad. <laughs> All right. And, uh, you know what? Yeah. I. Guys, I I can't come up with any more puns. Um, as Murtaugh would I say, I'm getting too old for this <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's next week's oh, song. Oh, wow, too old. wouldn't you know, yeah. I'm getting too old for this shit is the next week's song? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Danny Glover, we know you listen. Come on the show. <laughs> oh, my God. Did I ever tell you that once I was in the Orlando airport and uh, and Danny Glover lives down there, no I guess. Way. So I'm in the Orlando airport and um, <laughs> I'm eating lunch with my daughter in one of the, the restaurants down there. And Noah, Noah and I and, and Katie and I see Danny Glover and his son there. Well, dumbass me didn't realize that was Childish Gambino. I, I didn't realize it was Donald Glover. I did not even, because I didn't know. I didn't watch Community at the time. I guess it, that was th at that point. And so he's sitting there having lunch with Donald Glover, Danny and Don, and I'm like all about Danny, because duh, I mean, I grew up watching those those movies. And so I go, i like, oh, Mr. Glover, I'm a big fan of your work. And I'm like, <laughs> but I didn't take his picture or interrupt him that way. But then I left, and then years later, I was oh, like, you're oh, you're muted. After that, I was like, oh, my God. He was sitting with Donald Glover. He's probably more famous now than Danny was. when. Uh, but I felt like such a dork. He's probably, like, his son's like, dude, I'm fucking Donald Glover. <laughs> well, I don't, I thought they weren't related, but it would be interesting if oh, no, they, they are. knew each other. Are they? Yeah. Donald and Danny Glover are not related. Really? Because they were both there. That's so weird. Just, yeah. Well, I just looked it up. Both I, Encyclopedia Britannica. It's really nice. That's still a thing. Because I was feeling really good because they were both okay. there, but I had no idea who Donald Glover was at the time. I, but it was him. I have well, a, I have a picture. <laughs> Donald Glover. <laughs> Childish Gambino, please come on the show. We know you listen. Same for Danny Glover, uh, Murta. We know you, we know you listen. Come on the show. National treasures, both honestly. Absolutely. And then I started watching um, Community, and I totally died laughing watching. Love that show, Community. So. Six seasons in a movie. So funny. Oh, there goes my power. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for joining me this week and, and come back next week. I want to prove that we're not too old, that we can keep doing this. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think, it wasn't meant to be a I think, mic drop, guys. I think Heidi is frozen. <laughs> Heidi is frozen. Let it go. Let it go.
<laughs> and I'm always used to that that glare from Betsy when I make a bad pun. <laughs> That, she's, how she's dare just you? She's twirling her pen <laughs> menacingly. I mean, I'm very glad that I'm on this end of the camera. <laughs> Getting too old for this shit. <laughs> I'm safe over here right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to find a pen in the mail tomorrow, aren't I? <laughs> the telltale pen. Thanks a lot, everybody. Happy holidays, folks. Happy holidays. Thanks again to KPCO.